Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week I'm going to be taking a look at a brilliant little backyard plinking pistol. But before that, I'm heading to the farmyard to tackle an infestation of rats in broad daylight. Right, I'm back on the farmyard today. Um, we've been partly forced here by the weather forecast. It's okay at the moment, but there's a chance that it might get wet and windy. So I thought at least around the farm buildings, we've got shelter for ourselves and the equipment. And also because of the shelter provided by those buildings, the pellet is less likely to get blown about all over the place. Now I'm after rats and the attraction here is a silage clamp that's recently been scraped out. So there's not a lot of feed in it, but what has happened is through it being scraped out, it seems to have taken a lot of the old sort of crusty silage away, and the rats appear to have moved in on the fresh stuff that's underneath that. Um, there are a few moving around, so it looks like we're going to get a few shots. The peculiar thing is that these rats are out in broad daylight, but strangely, it's not quite so unusual on this farm. There are a lot of owls around here, and it seems like the rats have adjusted their habits and rather than being nocturnal, they're feeding much more by day simply to avoid those owls. Right, a very quick word about the kit for today. Now, the gun is the Daystate Red Wolf 2.2 calibre. Now, this is actually an FAC rated air gun. Not usually my first choice around farm buildings, but today I've wound it down to low power, which is about 16 foot pounds. Just gives it a little bit more velocity, which, if again, if it does get particularly windy, that pellet's going to be blown around a little bit less. Um, also, I've got pretty safe backstops here, so it should be absolutely fine. We've had a few test shots with it just to make sure that there wasn't too much zero shift, so I know it's dead on target too. Um, obviously, 10-shot multi-shot magazine, that's likely to be very handy with these rats should I need quick follow-up shots. Um, the scope I've got on here, it's my usual setup. It's the MTC Mamba Light. It's the 3 to 12 by 42, relatively small scope nice and compact. It's got just the right amount of zoom, that three to 12 times range for most of the air gun work that I do. Um, another thing I like about it, it's got a nice fine reticle, which just gives you that extra degree of precision. Um, and as ever, that's held on with sports match mounts. Right, well, as I said, there have literally been rats scuttling around while I've been talking. So we're gonna settle in now, try to be quiet and hopefully get a few shots. The wind has already whipped up quite significantly, so I'm very pleased that I'm shooting from inside a shed. The area I'm shooting across is actually very well sheltered, and the 16 foot pound muzzle energy of today's setup will also help to overcome any breeze. These rats are really eager to get out and feed, and the appeal of the remaining maize silage soon draws them out from their lair. I've got one in my sights and I just need it to keep still so I can line up for the shot. Oh, that one was digging away into the maze there. I couldn't get a bead on its head so I went for the heart and lung shot. Now this setup hits really hard. It took a few seconds for that rat to expire but quite frankly it didn't have a chance once that pellet hit home. And one nice thing that does seem to be happening across there because of the buildings, although the wind is really shaking the barn roof at times, the protection that we have got here from the buildings means that the area between me and where I'm taking the shots is actually pretty calm, so it doesn't appear that that wind's going to give me too much trouble when it comes to keeping shots on target. Pretty soon, 
two more rats creep out in search of easy pickings. Well that absolutely walloped that one down from beneath that tyre. And there was actually another one peeping out. It darted away, no doubt at the sound of the impacting pellet, but hopefully it'll be out for another look soon. Um, oh, one thing that I didn't mention when I was talking about the kit, I'm using the um, Primos trigger sticks, which I frequently use, especially when I'm sitting in ambush like that. Really good if you're using a pre-charged gun to rest it in this way. There really is no excuse for missing shots like this when you're shooting from such stability. A bit of a wait follows, but the rats really can't resist this silage. They're desperate to get out and feed, and another one soon makes the mistake of hanging around in clear view of our hiding place. and that was another one from by that tyre. Pellet smacked it back with a hell of a wallop, but I could actually see its tail flicking just behind where it was, so there's no doubt at all that was another good clean kill, and they definitely like it around that tyre. The rats might like it by the tyre, but they like it even more on the silage and another greedy customer soon sneaks out to tuck in. That was an absolutely tiny one and again it was really trying to rake into that maze. To be honest it was fidgeting about too much for me to attempt to try and get a bead on its head so I hit it with a heart and lung shot and that really was light sight, especially for such a tiny rat. That last rat might have been a small one, but there are also plenty of big ones on this farm. Another one has just crept out, and it's in their favourite spot again. That was yet another one from that tyre. Now rats really seem to like that sort of cover over their heads and, and here I don't doubt that it just makes them feel that little bit safer when those owls are on the prowl. Um, unfortunately for them it doesn't keep them safe from air gun pellets. That one was a really really solid smack to the head and that rat literally just dropped where it was standing. That certainly is today's top spot. Another one by the tyre and another really good solid kill. Um, that one was stood next to the previous one that I'd shot, completely ignoring it and again just whopped it, dropped it right where it was stood. Um, this setup is just absolutely nailing them. It's relatively close range, certainly none of these shots more than 25 metres and it's just stopping them dead in their tracks. After a brilliant hour or so it appears that we've had our lot as the ratty activity comes to a complete standstill. Right, well we're going to call it a day now. Um, it got off to a pretty hectic start with some good shooting but we've not seen any sign of a rat for about the last 45 minutes so we're starting to get a bit fidgety. It appears there's nothing doing now but I really can't complain. Um, it's been 
a decent time on the farm. We've made a small contribution towards the pest control here um, and an important time of year for that as well because now's the time the temperature's just about to start to drop. Rats will start moving in from the countryside onto the shelter of the farm where they're obviously going to find that shelter from the elements and also lots of food. So it may not seem like a huge haul of rats but they all make a difference and it should pave the way quite nicely when we start coming here through the winter nights for those night vision and lamping sessions. So we're going to head for home. I'm going to get those rats picked up. Proof there that you don't always have to venture out after dark to target rats. And now it's the Airgun Show News. This is the Airgun Show News. Wales is to ban pheasant shooting on its public land, throwing away the results of a public consultation that said shooting should continue. Natural Resources Wales decided to end the leasing of shooting on the Welsh Government estate, bowing to pressure from Wales's Environment Minister. Basque said it was considering mounting a legal challenge and urged all shooters to share a video on its website about the benefits of shooting to the countryside and economy. Britain's Paralympic air gunners have grabbed themselves a spot in the shooting events at the Paralympic Games in Tokyo in two years' time. James Beavis won gold in the Parasport World Cup in Chateau Roux and at the same time secured GB a quota place at the Paralympic Games, taking place right after the Olympics. Matt Skelhon won himself a gold and a bronze later in the week and there was also a team gold for James Beavis, Ryan Cockville and Tim Jeffrey. Jen McIntosh has retired from competitive target shooting. With five Commonwealth medals to her name, including some in air rifle, she's Scotland's most decorated female Commonwealth athlete of all time. Most recently, she was part of the medal-winning GB women's prone rifle team at the World Championships. She said that the price had become too steep and the rewards no longer high enough in value for her to continue her international shooting career. And finally, Britain's first ever Target Sprint Festival is about to kick off. The festival takes place at Yate Outdoor Sports Complex this Friday, Saturday and Sunday and will include the ISSF Target Sprint World Tour's first ever stop in Britain. The internationally recognised discipline combines running with air rifle shooting to develop marksmanship and physical fitness. It's billed as an excellent way to get newcomers into the shooting sports. That was the Egg and Show News. We don't review a lot of pistols on the air gun show, but we've got a brilliant one for backyard plinkers this week. It's the Umarex Browning Buckmark URX. Distributed in the UK by John Rothery Wholesale, this affordable pistol retails for around £79.99. First impressions, this is a pretty convincing replica of the original Browning Buckmark. It feels solidly constructed with most of the components made from metal or ballistic polymer. And it feels good in the hand, weighing in at just under 700 grams and measuring a fairly compact 30 centimetres. The ambidextrous grips are sculpted to fit the contours of your palm and also feature some subtle but very effective stippling. The finish of the grips actually feels slightly rubberized and that certainly helps in terms of getting a secure and comfortable purchase. This Umarex has a spring and piston action and it's cocked by breaking the barrel. The 177 caliber test gun is producing a muzzle energy of around three foot pounds. That's relatively low power even for an air pistol, but as a result, the cocking stroke is smooth and doesn't require a great deal of effort. Loading is direct to the breech and the barrel snaps back very cleanly into what feels like a perfectly secure lockup. The cocking stroke also sets the automatic safety catch which is positioned at the top of the left grip and you simply push it down with your thumb when you're ready to take the shot. The trigger is fairly basic and I'd expect it to be on a pistol like this. The blade has a very distinct curve to it and the single stage mechanism breaks predictably enough and with barely any noticeable creep. 
The open sights are the standard post and notch setup, which is just about perfect for backyard plinking. The rear element is adjustable for windage and elevation. You'll need to use a screwdriver to make those adjustments, but at least you know it's not going anywhere once you've got it set. This pistol has a rifled steel barrel, and accuracy is actually pretty good. It's not going to win any competitions, but that's not what it's been designed for. Its grouping is spot on for plinking and tin toppling at 10 metres, and I've had great fun doing that over the test period. If you look closely at the Buckmark URX, you'll see that it's equipped with a Picatinny type top rail for mounting an additional sighting system. John Rothery's actually included a Wolther Top 0.2 red dot sight, which retails for around £65 with the review pistol. So I've used the rail to connect that. Apart from being supplied with mounts to fit a Picatinny weaver type rail, this neat little scope also comes with the required battery. Features include multi-coated lenses and an 11 stop dial to adjust the brightness of the aim point. The sight is also fitted with windage and elevation turrets. Remove the covers and they turn by means of a screwdriver with very positive clicks. The sight is a great addition to this pistol and makes it even more of a pleasure to shoot. So, that's the Browning Buckmark URX from Umarex. It may not be powerful enough for pest control, but that's not what it's intended for. In fact, that low power is actually a great asset for plinking because it greatly reduces the risk of potentially dangerous ricochets. Easy to cock and an absolute joy to shoot, this affordable little pistol is a brilliant choice for fun gunning on the garden range. Look out for the new and improved Airgun Shooter magazine, packed full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport.